Hi and welcome to this Exmoor trim fitting video. Today we're going to be showing you how to fit the 110 bar set and in the following video we'll be showing you how to fit the stay fast hood that goes with it. So this vehicle we've already prepared. Um, so basically this bar set will work with a 110 station wagon or a 110 crew cab. Um, the first thing you need to do is remove the roof and you do this by working your way around the top of the vehicle and removing all the bolts that hold it to the side um, between the roof and the side panels. And then you'll find a series of bolts along the side of the body that attach it to the body capping. So you undo all the bolts and then probably with the help of two or three people, you can lift the roof and the side panels off the vehicle. Once you've done that, the next most important thing to decide um, before fitting the bar set is what you're gonna do with your rear door. Um, obviously the full size rear door won't work with a bar set and hood. Um, with this vehicle, we've gone for a swing away door. Um, you could also go for the drop down tailgate option. Um, there are several aftermarket options available um, and we advise that you have that ready before you start work on fitting your bar set and hood. So when you're taking the roof off the vehicle, um, you can leave the door seals in place. Uh, these will be reused both on the second row and front doors. So to begin fitting the bar set, uh, the first part to fit is the rear hoop, which is this piece here. And as the name suggests, that sits on top of the capping and locates on the two lugs on either side of the corner of the vehicle. So first thing to do is to lift the bar into place. Now, in most cases, you will have to mark and drill the two holes in each corner. Um, some vehicles may already have these holes in place, but with most station wagons, you will have to mil uh, mark and drill these. So with the holes marked, you can just use a center punch and a hammer just to mark the holes. And then with wearing safety glasses, you can use a nine mil drill. All the bolts that hold the, the, uh, the frame down are eight mil. Be sure to blow the swarf off or use a vacuum cleaner. Don't wipe it off with your hand because it can be very sharp. Okay, so once you've drilled the four holes, uh, two on each corner, you can lift the bar back into place. And then it's secured down using an M8 by 30 hex bolt, a washer, top and bottom, and a nylock nut underneath. You'll find all the nuts and bolts in the fitting kit that come with the bar set. Okay, so with a 13 mil spanner and socket, you can then just tighten up the, the nut and bolt. And just repeat that on all four bolts. Okay, with the rear hoop bolted in place, the next part to install is the front hoop, and that's the double hoop here. So it goes on with these tabs here, which are for the overdoor drain channels pointing towards the front of the vehicle. So much in the same way as the rear hoop, you lift it up into position. Again, it will mount on the lugs on the top of the body capping. And again, it's simply a case of marking and drilling the holes through the body capping and securing in place with the M8 by 30 bolts. So with both the front and rear hoop in place, the next section to install are the horizontal tie bars. And these are the sections that link the two bar sections together. Um, they are handed and it's important to note that the section here with the tongue sticking out is the front and 
these C sections go on the inside of the vehicle. So Paul just offer that one up now and see how it goes. So we're gonna locate on the inside of the tabs at the front and the rear. So you can see the holes will line up here once you've got it in place and it simply bolts together with the M8 by 25 hex bolts, nylon nuts and washers. So you want to push the bolt in from the outside with the nylock on the inside face. Can you pull that please? That's it. And you'll notice all the holes are slotted so you've got a little bit of adjustment to make sure that everything is sitting square on the vehicle. So again, fitting the bar on the driver's side. So you can see how it lines up on the inside, bolt through from the outside. With a nylock and washer to secure in place. And then the same on the front. So with the horizontal tie bars loosely bolted in place, we're now going to add the interim support hoop, which is the bar that joins the two horizontal tie bars together across the middle. Now there are two bars in the kit that look very similar, but the one you're looking for has these little tabs on the end that match up with the cups on the top of the hoop. So lift it up into place. It should just slot in. And again, this one's held in place with the M8 by 25 hex bolts, washers and nylock nuts. And again, push the bolts through from the outside and the nylocks on the inside. Okay, so we now have the horizontal tie bars and the interim hoop all loosely bolted up. So the order to tighten things are, we start with the interim hoop. So we tighten the four bolts on each corner and that should square the bars together. So with the interim hoop now tightened up and in place, you can start by tightening the horizontal tie bar where it joins to the rear hoop. Okay, so tighten on both sides of the vehicle. And then tighten the two bolts on each side at the front. With the rear section of the bar set now installed, uh, we're gonna start at the front of the vehicle with the screen rail. And that looks like this. It's an aluminum extrusion with a slot, and this is the front edge that points towards the front of the vehicle. So if you want to off that one up, Paul. And it sits directly on the top of the windscreen and with the slot facing forward this is where your hood will sit and it wants to sit flush with the edge of the screen now in the top are a series of six mil holes you may have to drill through your screen if the holes that you have either aren't there or don't line up but it's a single skin through the top of the screen so you can literally just drill through with a six and a half mil drill. And then it's a case of bolting in place with M6 hex bolts, which are in the fitting kit. So the bolts go through from the top with a washer and then a washer and a nylock from the underside on the underface of the screen. Now it's recommended that when you fit this, that you put a bead of silicon 
between the screen rail and the top of the screen just to prevent any water or wind ingress into the vehicle. You can tighten up all the bolts on the screen rail, just making sure that it is sitting flush on this front edge here. So the next part we're going to install is the B pillar reinforcement bar, which links the pillar that sits between the, the front and the rear door and it joins across the vehicle to add the strength back into here. So that's the last long piece you'll have left. Um, has a foot on the end. So you have two bolt holes here and two tapped holes in the side. Okay, so if you offer the bar up in place, you'll see that it sits somewhere under Paul's hand, it sits on top of the capping with the upright in between, and it's simply a case of two M6 hex bolts from either side into the threaded holes in the bar. And then a hex bolt drop through from the top on either side. the washer and a nylock nut to hold it in place. Now we suggest fitting all of these nuts and bolts on both sides loosely before you tighten everything up. One thing just to be careful of, if your vehicle has an internal light, um, you may have the wiring coming up through the B pillar. So you wanna be careful not to catch that between um, the plate and the bar, just so you don't cut the wire. Um, you may also be advised to put some sealer or gasket um, in between these two faces just to make sure that there's no water can get in between the two of them once it's tightened up. So once you've got everything bolted in place loosely, start by tightening up um, the two bolts coming down from the top. tighten up those on both sides and then you can tighten up the bolts going through from the inside. So once you have the B pillar reinforcement bar and the screen rail in place the last two pieces we need to fit on each side are the cider door drain channels and the overdoor drain channels. So these are handed. Uh, this is the side of door drain channel. And this is for the left side of the vehicle. So the slot in the back faces towards the rear. And then we have the overdoor drain channel. And again, these are handed and they taper towards the front of the vehicle. So we'll start with the side of door. Now this mounts onto the two tabs on the front of the hoop, so the here and here on the lower hole at the top and the slotted hole on here. Now you'll see on the, on the drain channel, there's a slotted hole here and at the top and they match up with these. So you insert the bolt from the inside so that the hex head is on the inside of the slot Offer it through the slot in the bar. And then the same principle at the top. So your M6 hex bolt goes into the slot in the channel. offers up through the lower slot on the hoop with a washer and then six nylon nut. Okay, so you don't want to tighten these up just yet because we'll adjust the position to match the door seals and make sure everything's nice and square. So repeat the same process on the other side. 
Okay, so on the right hand side of the vehicle, the slot faces again at the rear. And then again with a lower bolt through the inside of the slot. And through the tab on the bar with the washer and the M6 nylon on the inside. Again, don't tighten this one up, just get it securely in place. And then we will tighten everything up once we've got the over doors in place and we've squared it up to the door. So the next piece to put on is the over door drain channel and that secures on the top slotted hole on the hoop and on the windscreen, you'll see there's a slotted hole here just below where we bolted the screen rail. This is probably easy, easiest done with two people. So if you lift in place, you'll see there's a notch in the middle that sits on the B pillar. The drain channel sits on top of the screen rail in the channel. So you see that should just sit in there nicely. And then again, hex bolt from the outside through the slots to the inside with the nylock nut and the washer on the inner face and the same at the rear. And you'll notice there's a little tab on the very end of the drain channel and that sits inside your side of door drain channel. So once you have the over door and the side of door loosely bolted in place, next thing to do is to refit your door seals. So start by tucking them up into the corner at the front as well. And get them nice and snug and then work your way along the middle and clip it onto the drain channel. Same with the second row door. Again, push it into the corners, making sure you've got a nice seal. And work your way along the top. And once you have your seals in place, that means we can now actually close the doors properly and line up the over door inside the door drain channel. So just close the doors gently, make sure they don't catch anywhere. And what we need to do now is make sure that we've got a nice even gap along the side of the door here between the screen rail. And you'll see there's some adjustment on the slots so we can move them back and forward to get them right. And again, we want to try and get a nice even gap along the top of the doors, front, front to back. So just square up the side of door drain channel so that the gap coming up from the door carries on and is nice and equal all the way up to the top and make sure it's tightened up and in place. So the next thing then to do is to square up the over door drain channel. And again, you're looking for as even a gap as you can across the top of the door. Okay, so once you've tightened the rear, same thing again at the front. Just double check that your door seals are all correctly located. And then just carefully shut your door and make sure that nothing's catching and that you're happy that it's all square. And the same again on the second row, just double check your seals.
that's it. So that's the over door and side of door drain channel fitted. And you can repeat exactly the same process on the other side of the vehicle. So once you've fitted the side of door and over door drain channels on both sides, that is basically the bar set installed. So we'll just do a quick recap of how it all goes together. It's starting at the rear of the vehicle, fit your rear hoop and bolt that down securely. Second step is to fit the front double hoop and then you can bolt that one down securely. Step three, you install the horizontal tie bars, remembering that they are handed. So loosely bolt those into position. Step four is to fit the interim hoop. So you then tighten that one up before tightening up the horizontal tie bars. So with that done, that's basically the cage assembly fitted. You then come to the front of the vehicle and fit your screen rail, remembering that it needs to sit flush with the top of the windscreen with the slot facing forward. And again, we suggest that you put some silicon sealer or gasket underneath it just to fill any gaps between the two parts. Next step is to fit the B-pillar reinforcing bar. And again, it's also handy to put some gasket sealer between the two faces in there. Once that's in place, you then come to the back of the second row door and fit the side of door drain channels. These can be fitted loosely to start with. And then you fit the over door drain channels, again, fit those loosely into place. Reinstall the door seals. Line everything up so that you've got nice even gaps up the side of the door and across the top, and then tighten them up into position. So once the bar sets all are fully installed, the last pieces that need to go on are the aluminium extrusions that go along the side of the vehicle. Um, we call these Z channels, and they're what's used to actually clip the side of the hood to, to connect them to the vehicle. Um, we also need to fit the tailgate bar clips. So this vehicle's already had them installed, but we'll just basically show you how to measure up and fit them on this side here. So in the belt rail kit, you'll end up with two long sections, both the same length, and two shorter sections. So obviously the long sections are for the side and the short ones go on the rear of the vehicle. So we'll start at the back with the short section. And it is important that you make sure you get these in the correct in the correct location. So they want to line up on top of the capping about three or four millimeters from the top of the bodywork. And we set it fairly central um, so you've got an equal gap at either end and it's simply a case of marking the holes um, with a pen. Obviously we have already pre-drilled this vehicle but once you've marked it Using a hammer and a punch, you can center punch the holes um, just to get them centered. And then using a drill with a 4.2 mil drill bit, making sure to wear your safety glasses, you can then just drill through the capping in the punched hole markings. So in the fitting kit for the belt rails, you'll find some black rivets and those are used to hold the Z channels to the back of the vehicle. So using a pop rivet gun, Simply rivet each hole into place. And you can see that it's mounted centrally on the panel and with a gap of about three to four millimeters at the top so that the bar is actually pretty much central within the piece of capping. Okay, so for the long section on the side of the vehicle, that actually sits directly below the body capping. So tuck it up snug underneath the capping and it goes flush with a little bit of trim at the end here on the corner. And what we advise you to do is mark one hole at the end. You 
You can then center punch that hole and drill it, again with a 4.2 mil hole. So once you've drilled the first hole, you can then rivet the bar into place. Now you can centre punch each of the holes through the bar and then drill them. By doing it this way, you'll guarantee that the holes line up. Put the rivet in at the end so that you've got the bar secured. And then you can work your way along drilling and riveting the other five holes. You then simply repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle, again with the short section mounted in the middle of the capping on the rear and below the capping on the side. So the last piece of hardware to fit before installing the hood is the tailgate clip. You'll have two of these in your kit and they are handed. Now they fit on the vehicle with the opening facing backwards. And when you install them, they want to sit just off the edge of the inside of the capping by a couple of millimetres and about 12 millimetres in from the end or about half inch. So it's simply a case of lining it up squarely on the top of the capping, marking the two holes, punching and drilling them and then it's held in place with the M6 by 20 mil socket cap head screws, a washer on either side and a nylock nut. So Alex will just show you now how to sit that on there. So again, a few millimeters from the back of the body capping, 12 millimeters or half inch from the end of the, the clip to the edge of the body capping, and simply mark and drill your holes. So you can drill the holes out with a 6.5 mil drill, as the bolts that hold it in place are six mil. So the clip's held in place with the M6 by 20 socket cap head screws and you just want to put a washer underneath each one and then a washer on the underside with a nylock nut to hold it all securely in place. So to tighten up the screws use a 4 mil allen key and a 10 mil spanner. You don't need to over tighten these as you don't want to crack the plastic. So the tailgate clips are actually used to hold the tailgate bar in place and this is what the rear of the curtain of the hood will secure to. So you can just check once you've got them in place, the bar will slip in at the back and then click in on the other side. And you should have a little bit of slop either side so that the bar has plenty of room to move inside. Also just show you here before we fit the hood how to remove the tailgate bar because there is a little bit of a knack to doing it. So you simply grab hold, twist downwards and pull towards you. 